Welcome back. Well, tomorrow's rivalry game between South Dakota State and South Dakota marks the 112th time these two teams have gotten together on the gridiron, dating all the way back to 1889. And as for the series record, it's probably what you would expect. Very close with the Jacks leading the all-time series 53-51, to and there are also seven ties added on to that. But in recent years, the result of this game hasn't been so back and forth. SDSU has won the last eight tying the longest win streak in this history series with the last eight game win streak belonging to the Yotes from 1935 to 1942. South Dakota's last victory over the Jacks was actually in Brookings in the year 2000, a 41-28 decision. But the last time USD beat SDSU in Vermillion dates back even further to 1997. With all of that said, anyone who has watched the games in recent years has seen firsthand but these two teams are getting much closer in their level of play, and this year might be the closest. With playoff situations on the line heading into this one, players, coaches, and fans couldn't ask for a better final game of the regular season. For more on tomorrow's matchup in Vermilion, let's hear from the head coaches. When you look across the levels of football and you put rivalry in front of the game, it, many times it's close. There's just that added maybe pressure for one team and excitement for the other team, whatever it is. This year, two really good football teams are playing. Yeah, Chris is an unbelievable football player. He's got grit. He's got great speed. He's a good thrower. Uh, he's got a handle on their, their no huddle offense. Uh, he's dangerous. And, and teams obviously have to change their schemes to try to defend him. Now, based on what we see, the number of plays they're running, uh, we've not faced a team like this in, in the, the last 10 years. Well, the way to defend uh, a fast offense is to get them off the field, you know, play great defense, you know, and if it's three and out, if it's six and out, whatever it is, you know, and you got to rise up. And But the threat of him running and being able to get the first down is always a, a, a huge problem for a defense. Yeah, no, I, I, we expect a really hostile environment. We expect a, a lot of red in the stands. And uh, I know our fans, if they could get tickets, they're going to be there. Uh, but those are fun games. They really are. And, and uh, the goal then is to quiet the crowd. But it's going to be 60 minutes of tough football. It's going to be a challenging matchup. Uh, they're a very good football team, uh, very well coached. They've got uh, excellent uh, skilled players and an experienced offensive line on the offensive side. Uh, We've got a defensive group uh, that uh, uh, has quality at all three levels and you know a lot like last week uh, the same challenges. You know, we've got to start uh, defensively with uh, containing the running game and that's going to include the quarterback running game. Uh, we, uh, we did a very poor job of that uh, uh, last year. We did a very poor job of that this past week uh, against North Dakota State and so uh, as we have every week, where game plan has got to be uh, focused on containing the running game and, and try to force them into some off-schedule situations. A yeah, very talented uh, dual-threat quarterback. Um, you know, I think he has improved at throwing the football this year uh, from last year, just like we talk about Chris has improved in throwing the football uh, from last year to this year, and a very dangerous runner. A uh, guy that uh, you have to find a way to give different looks and try to, to make feel uncomfortable in the pocket. Um, and uh, he's got some uh, really good targets to throw to. Well, he's a tight end that can stretch the field, uh, run vertical routes. Uh, you know, they use him in a lot of different ways, kind of like how we use our tight ends, where you'll see him split out in the formation as well as attached. and. And a guy you have to account for uh, all the time uh, uh, because of how they utilize him. Yeah, he's a big receiver that creates matchup problems on the perimeter uh, because of his size and his route running ability and the way that he controls his body. And so, you know, he uh, he, he presents his own uh, series of problems for a defensive football team. The fact that uh, he, he creates a matchup with his much smaller player and his ability to get up after the football. You know, we, we try to do the same thing in our system, you know, where we have a couple of taller receivers on the perimeter that we hope can create matchup problems, and, and he does that uh, exceptionally well for them. Yeah, we've played well at home, and uh, our crowd's been a big part of that, and it's, uh, it's great. I think this game's been sold out for over a month and shows the interest of our fans and the passion that our fans have, and we need to use that uh, to play with that kind of passion on Saturday. 
Well, tomorrow is finally the day the rivalry game is here, and I know we've said it a million times, but let me just remind you, if you can't make it to Vermillion tomorrow, you can catch the game live right here on Midco SN. Pre-game show starts at 1.30 with kickoff set for 2 p.m. When we come back, the in-state rivalry expands off the field and onto the Twitter scene. We take a look at some of the best tweets heading into tomorrow's game. Stay tuned. Midco Sports Tonight. Presented by Avera Orthopedics.